ICO has been at the front of the solar industry for the past few years, offering some of the most efficient and advanced solar panel modules on the market, including the latest ICO Neostar 3, which has cracked 500 watts with 25% efficiency, which is absolutely mind-blowing compared to where panel technology was at even just a few years ago. One of the features that ICO likes to shout about is the advanced shade mitigation technology that is built into the panels. And from the videos they've put out, it almost looks as though they've created a shade-proof solar panel. So what is this technology? How does it work? How much will it help to mitigate shade and boost the production of your solar system? And is this something that you need for your roof? So what is this technology and how does it work? Well, to start with, let me explain how the individual solar cells within most standard solar panels are connected together, because that's what it all comes down to. As you probably know, solar panels use bypass diodes to reduce power loss when shaded. These diodes divide the panel into three vertical sections, allowing current to bypass a section if it's heavily shaded. Most modern panels also use something called half-cut cell technology, where standard cells are physically sliced in half to improve efficiency and reduce resistance. In these designs, the panel is also split horizontally, with bypass diodes positioned through the centre. This layout creates six substrings in total, three in the top half and three in the bottom, with each half wired in parallel and the cells within each half connected in series. When the sun is out and there's no shading, current flows freely through every cell, and the panel can output at full capacity. But if part of the panel, say the top left section, becomes shaded, the voltage in that area drops. Once it gets low enough, the bypass diode across that section activates, allowing current to flow around the shaded cells. This keeps the panel operating, but with one section bypassed, output drops to around two thirds of the maximum. ICO's ABC modules work in a very similar way, however shaded cells don't immediately trigger bypass diodes. Instead, ICO employs a more advanced and efficient approach based on semiconductor physics, specifically a process called semiconductor breakdown. Now, breakdown may sound like a bad thing, but in this case, it's a controlled reversible electrical behavior that allows current to continue flowing through a shaded cell even when that cell is no longer producing power. This prevents the current from being interrupted across the whole substring. To understand how this works, we need to know what type of semiconductor breakdown is taking place. There are multiple types, however, based on the structure and function of ICO solar cells and the voltages typically involved with solar panels, it's most likely a controlled avalanche breakdown. So how does this actually work? Well, when one cell in a solar panel gets shaded, it can't produce power like the others. But because all the cells are connected in a chain, the electricity still needs to flow through that shaded cell, even though it's not doing any work. This puts the cell into something called reverse bias. That just means the electricity is trying to flow through the cell in the opposite direction to how it normally does, almost like it's being pushed backwards. If this pressure builds up enough, the cell reaches a point called avalanche breakdown. At that point, it basically opens a path that lets the electricity keep flowing through, even though the cell is shaded. It's a built-in safety mechanism. In ICO's case, the cells are carefully designed to handle this process safely. So instead of shutting down a big chunk of the panel, the shaded cell just lets the power through and the rest of the panel keeps working, almost like normal. This controlled avalanche process is possible thanks to ICO's back contact cell design. It gives them very precise control over how each cell behaves electrically, especially in shaded conditions. That's what allows individual cells to safely enter breakdown without causing damage. There is a limit to this, however. ICO says that if four or more cells within one of the panel's three main sections, the parts protected by the bypass diodes, become shaded, the bypass diode will activate and allow current to flow around that section. This happens due to a limitation of the controlled avalanche breakdown. Although it lets current flow through the shaded cell, the reverse bias doesn't disappear, so each shaded cell will cause a certain amount of voltage drop. It's like trying to force the electricity through a narrow path. It works, but there will still be resistance. 
So if only a single cell is shaded, you might see a voltage drop of around 20 volts, which is manageable. However, if four cells are shaded, that could build up to 80 volts dropped over the whole section, which is a lot of strain on just one part of the circuit. Once that reverse voltage gets high enough, the bypass diode activates. This creates a low resistance path around the shaded section, relieving the electrical stress and helping prevent unnecessary power loss or overheating. This two-stage system, first allowing control breakdown, then activating bypass diodes only when absolutely necessary, gives ICO's modules a clear advantage under partial shading. Instead of losing a third of the panel's output from a single leaf or bird dropping, they maintain far more of their power and only sacrifice output when the shading becomes significant. So now that we understand how the technology works, the big question is, does it actually improve performance? And if it does, by how much? To answer that, we need to look at the data ICO has provided. They've released two videos showing how their partial shading optimization performs in real world scenarios. And in both, they claim a noticeably better output under shade compared to standard panels. Both videos are linked in the description. In the first video, ICO show visual comparisons comparing their ABC modules side by side with traditional TopCon panels under four different shading scenarios. Tree shadows, bird droppings, chimney shade, and even a single cell being shaded. Under dynamic tree shade, the TopCon panel has two bypass diodes activate, reducing the output to 33%, while ICO's module keeps running at 59%, a pretty significant increase. With just a single cell shaded, ICO's module output is over 30% better than the TopCon panel, likely due to its bypass diode needing to kick in. With something as small as bird droppings, ICO's module still produces 87% of its maximum output, which is a dramatic increase against the TopCon panel, which is reduced down to 0%. And with more structured shade, like from a chimney, ICO's module still delivers around 72% compared to just 33% from the standard design. In ICO's second video, they set up a demonstration using a panel connected to a water pump, along with a meter to show the panel's electrical output. As the video progresses, they apply more and more shading to each panel. You can clearly see the water stream weakening and the meter readings dropping, especially on the top con panel. On screen now, you can see where each panel was shaded, along with the meter readings from each stage of the test. With two shadings, ICO's panel is operating at approximately 92% of its maximum output, whereas the TopCon panel is only at 65%. For four shadings, it drops to 88% for ICO and 34% for TopCon. For six shadings, it's 78% and 1.9%. And finally, for 12 shadings, it's 72% compared to 1.4%. That's a massive difference, and it shows just how effective ICO's cell level optimization is at keeping panels working, even under heavy shade. So after seeing ICO's demonstrations, the big question is, does this actually translate into the real world? Unfortunately, the answer isn't so simple. The best real world test I've come across is from a channel called MC Electrical. In this video, he looks at a number of different shading situations to see whether ICO's shading technology actually makes a difference. There's a link in the description and I'd highly recommend watching it after this video. The video tests various shading situations, many of which are very similar to the ICO demonstrations we've just looked at. And it found that in many real world scenarios, the performance difference wasn't as dramatic as ICO show. His testing suggests that ICO's modules only show a clear performance benefit under very light or localized shading, like the size of a phone or a wallet. This is still impressive, however, it's not quite the shade-proof behavior that we were seeing in the ICO video. Now, this may not sound so surprising after looking at how the technology actually works. The avalanche breakdown would lean to it only performing better under very small amounts of shade. However, this directly contradicts ICO's demonstration as to how it works. So is ICO overselling the technology? Possibly, I don't know. But either way, the advanced technology is still helping the panel to handle shade. And it's not coming at a premium price either. ICO panels cost about the same as other top panels in the industry. 
so you are getting better shape mitigation for no added cost. It's also worth noting that even without this advanced shade technology, Ico currently still have the best panels on the market. The new Neostar 3s that have just been released to the UK are very impressive, with the top range model cracking 500 watts with 25% efficiency. Check out our video review on this new panel in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, it really helps our channel out. And if you subscribe at the same time, you'll be the first to see our new videos when they're released. Again, I definitely recommend checking out MC Electrical's video, it's really interesting to see the real world test. Thanks for watching.